right, good morning, everybody. So the topic of today is, is about uh, planning rather than panicking. Um, and so just going to briefly go through, it's not really, I'm going to talk about planning rather than planning itself. So this isn't a planning session, it's about actually getting ready for, for planning. So this is uh, a graphic that we've produced really about the, the phases that I think are going to take place uh, during the course of this uh, episode in our lives. So we're currently in the, the lockdown mode at the moment. Um, and what I call, I, I think we're at the, the end of what I call the, the festival of uh, catastrophization. Uh, so this is where we, we jumped on every single webinar, Zoom call that was possibly going on uh, to find out anything we could about what the situation was. Um, I think we're towards the end of that now, actually getting a bit more focused. And really, uh, I think at the moment, we've got to take a look at, uh, well, how do we, how do we survive? Um, and, uh, and then actually, okay, so what are the products and services we're going to market and what are the products and services we're going to sell? Uh, and it's really all about um, adapting to the new situation. So what skills do we have to improve on or what skills do we actually have to start learning? And then, uh, then it's really about uh, starting to look at, well, when the, the locked up, lockdown starts to end, when we face up, starts being phased out, is actually how do we prepare for that? How do we get, if we've got a team of people and they're, they're not currently not working, so how do we get those back? Uh, how do we ramp up our marketing for the new world? Um, and then when things really start to, to open up, it's a sprint to get going, find new customers, actually get our existing customer base working with us again, and then look to, to thrive. So those are the phases that I think um, we're going to all go through. Uh, and it's really the moment, obviously, the real focus is on survival. Um, but obviously, we've got to look further ahead than just actually how we're going to get through the next few, few weeks. Um, so, yeah. Ah, well. So, so I just like to say that what we we talk about failure, and the failure, failure is the failure to participate. So, I wonder if everybody could just actually uh, just show their participation by uh, just writing in. Well, where where are they based? Where where are they uh, joining in from? And also, one thing that they actually enjoy about the lockdown phase. And one thing that actually they really find very difficult. If you could all do that, that'd be great. Well, perhaps we'll that's a quick sort of simplistic survey. Good, I'm just going to push on now, so because of course time is short. So one thing is that, well, why do people stay where they are? And that's um, <laughs> this thing called fear. So there's a lot of fear around at the moment. Um, and that can lead to kind of like a paralysis. People just don't do anything because they're scared. Um, but really, uh, actually, if you look at the world itself, if you focus on the things that we have control over, um, fear will go away. So, it, and, and we talk about false expectations appearing real. So that's really just worries and anxieties, um, which actually, they, they do look very real. But when you actually analyze them, they are, they're just fictitious, really. Most of them will never take place. So the news media are fantastic at um, actually working this, this fear. They come up with all sorts of dreadful headlines about what's going to happen and, and all this sort of thing, how many people are going to die and the economy is going to be in free fall for the next 10 years, all that sort of thing. So what I say to people is just restrict your access to news. Don't get bogged down in it and uh, all the, the fear that these people are uh, exploiting. So stay away from it. Keep, keep to the real world. Um, keep to the things that you have control over and that you can, you can influence. So we're talking about survive and then thrive. So, so at the moment, some businesses are in complete survive mode. Uh, all they have, they, they can't operate. I mean, if you run a restaurant or a bar or something like that or a coffee shop, um, you can't trade. So it is all about surviving. Uh, some of us are... In, in a you know have lost a lot of customers um and uh, so we're you know finding it quite difficult and of course uh, some of us are actually doing quite nicely thank you very much um you know actually not really badly affected by the current situation 
and things are continuing more or less as, as normal. So depending on where you are, obviously that's going to influence uh, how you plan. Um, but it, all the said, uh, you still need to plan. So I said it's your 90 day plan. Why do I choose 90 days? Well, it's a, just, you know, it's a sort of three month um, passage of time. And I think, you know, if you look at it, it's about far enough ahead that, that we can just about work out what might be happening. Uh, we don't know quite how long this lockdown phase is going to go on for, but you know it might be another another month or it might be a little bit longer than that. Um, and then it also it looks like that it's probably going to be rather phased out rather than just end. So there's going to be a you know a, a phased phased withdrawal of uh, the lockdown situation. So I think again you could put that into your plan. How's that going to to influence you and affect you? In your business, I think it's uh, so. Really, it's all about actually understanding where you are, and uh, and from that point of view, is there, there you can plan ahead and work out the best way forward for yourself. So, just want to move on to another action coach principle: the identity iceberg. So, at the moment, um, we've we've rather got used to swimming in in a kind of uh, you know warm Mediterranean sea it's very calm and you know life, life is good life has been quite easy for the last few years for, for a lot of us and um, suddenly that environment's changed and uh, we're now in, in swimming in, an, in Arctic conditions so actually that, that's obviously going to have a big influence on us on how we, we see things but actually again I, I take a look at this and say okay your environment uh, most of us are now working from home if we have worked before uh, so it's, it's about actually how you make your home environment a work environment so actually put some rules in place about uh, where your workplace is within the home and uh, also your hours of working uh, don't get sucked into just you know working every single hour don't move around the house um, as far as possible so have some zones in place I mean I've got uh, you know uh, 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 my wife and, and a family and two children here um, so they're kind of doing their own thing as well um, we, we seem to be have, have this thing called bones on the entire day which is a uh, some kind of TV program from the States and I look at your identity so you've got a new environment here so how does your um, your business identity look for going forward in the new virtual world? Obviously, if you've been trading and you've been in a physical environment, meeting people face to face, that has all changed now. We work in a virtual world. Um, so actually develop your identity so that it actually fits and complements the virtual world. Your values probably should stay pretty much the same. Um, so, the, but again, you might be looking at it and think, well, what are, what are the values that are important to me now that we live in a virtual world? Um, so obviously things like customer service, uh, which obviously, you know, is something very important to most businesses, but actually, um, how does that work in a virtual world where people can't see you, where they can't see that you're smiling? So how do you actually put that across? And then your beliefs. Now, your beliefs are really going to drive your behaviors. So if you think that really um, this is a, a situation out of which you're not going to get, that will influence your behaviors. You're going to struggle. Um, so really keep some positive beliefs. Uh, work on those beliefs. Work on, uh, you know, staying positive. And then skills. Well, you know, I think probably we're all being forced to learn new skills, whether it's actually just understanding how Zoom works. <laughs> so that's that's been one of the, the the things you think you oh it seems quite simple but then it's got all sorts of little buttons here and there which um we don't know about uh until we actually discover them so as you work on those skills uh now is a good time really to improve your skills um and i think i would really recommend that because actually to earn more learn more is a good maxim so that's that. And now, um, so setting a future. So what we look at is when it comes to planning, start with the end in mind. So, you know, if you're actually being realistic about it, if you think ahead 90 days and work, to, work in your mind, okay, well, what would be a really good result for me at the end of this next 90 days? 
Um, and actually, sometimes it's good to think, okay, what would be the fantastic result? Um, what would be the, you know, the, the worst case scenario? And uh, what can I actually put up with? And actually start with, with that and actually work your way around all of those scenarios and come up with something that actually makes a lot of sense to you. So work to what I would call the end in mind. It's a good way to plan. It's, it's how you start to know your numbers in your business. So how many leads do you need? Um, what is your conversion rate? Uh, and, uh, you know, when it comes to sales, uh, what is your average value sale? And I know some people say, oh, Hamish, you know, I don't have a, 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 an average in my sales. Well, of course you do. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it, it's about working those things out, understanding your business in more detail. So getting to know the numbers, getting to know who buys from you um, and keeping in touch with your client base. So I've identified seven areas in which to, to you need planning in. And I think uh, it's a good idea to have at least a, a couple of goals for each of these areas. Um, so finances, so get your budgets in place. Uh, if you haven't done a cash flow, do one. And if you're struggling to know, understand how to do one, talk to your accountant or talk to Derek or, or come to me. I can help you actually put that in place. Um, it's really important that you understand your budgeting. So, because obviously some things at the moment you're not going to be doing, some things you'll be increasing, uh, and some things you'll be looking at. So, well, well, I can't afford to do that at the moment. So, um, what do I do instead? Um, and then delivery. Well, again, we've moved into this virtual world. So, how is your product or service going to be delivered? Um, how can you actually work on that? Um, and it's it's really understanding how how in this new environment you can actually start to do deliver services so we're looking at you know businesses pivoting maybe not doing what they used to be doing actually switching around turning things on their head a bit so what are the products and services that you have to offer again you know a lot of it would be uh, used to be face to face that's not possible at the moment so it's got to be done on a, on a virtual basis so how does that impact your delivery uh, what products actually can you market and sell effectively in this new new environment? And then if you've got a team of people, and of course that actually we all have a team of people because they actually we um, uh, even if we're only a sole entrepreneur, <clears throat> we've got to actually make sure that we get the best out of ourselves. So understanding the things that motivate us, the things that actually uh, are that we we can do well. So focus on those. Um, if you need help in anything. Make sure that you've got that. Make sure that your people are fully occupied. Um, and uh, also, you know, are the jobs that need to be done, um, but actually, you know, you, you don't have the skills. So actually make sure that you've got people who can help you. And I think I'll move on to marketing because really to get us out of this uh, morass that we're now in, it's going to be marketing and sales that will bring us out of this. So I emphasize that keep on marketing, um, make sure that you actually put time aside to, to market um, and develop your marketing skills. Uh, so again, I go back to understanding your numbers. So for, uh, when you're doing a, what campaigns are you going to be running? What methodologies are you going to be using? Because obviously things have, have changed. Um, you may have been doing direct mail or, or net, a lot of physical networking. That's all gone. So it's all about actually how can you make sense of the new uh, virtual world? How do you market in that? So, you know, are you using the social media platforms effectively? And if you're not, well, actually get some training on them. Uh, so get good at it. Obviously, we've got uh, Linda Huckle to help us with LinkedIn. If anybody, you know, she's an absolutely fantastic teacher on LinkedIn full of really, really fantastic little nuggets of information that's really helpful. Uh, and I think uh, Facebook, again, people, I know people, a lot of people use Facebook, but there's other, other platforms, Instagram um, uh, and Twitter. So actually, you know, it, it'll be depending on your business and depending on, on where you are in your business, how you market yourself, which platforms are going to be the most important to you, but get onto them, use them, learn how to use them, learn how to get more effective on them. And then sales. Well, obviously, you should be continuing to sell. I know I've sort of asked a 
some people have asked me, well, should I, should I be selling, Amish? You know, I said, yeah, of course you should be selling. But the message, of course, has to be um, selling with compassion. Uh, the, the sort of uh, days of hard sales, if, if people think that you're being sold to, then they'll run a mile. Uh, but they all, people want help at the moment, desperately want help. So it's about actually showing that, showing value, showing that you can actually help somebody. So try and understand what the world looks like to your prospects and customers, how, you know, and actually working through uh, how they benefit from working with you in terms of selling. And then uh, we've touched on it now, but obviously the, the government initiatives um, do, do uh, uh, stay uh, alert to what the government is offering. I know a lot of us find, look at it and think, well, none of this seems to be uh, relevant to me, but actually, you know, it's probably worth staying in touch <clears throat> with somebody like Derek, your accountant, uh, and actually just making sure, and if you actually are going to apply for a loan, do it through an accountant because they will help you actually put a strong case because uh, I know that at, uh, most of the people I know who've gone for the loans and have been successful have done so through their accountant. And if the people who have gone for a loan and, not, and failed, actually, it, it's, they have, they've tried to do it by themselves. It doesn't mean, of course, you're going to get it because, as Derek said, it's all a bit strange. The banks seem to be completely um, divorced from what the government is wa wanting them to do. But that's, you know, I'm sure that'll sort itself out in due time. So, um, so that's kind of all I've, I've really got to, to say on, on how, the, the sort of planning thing. I am running a planning session myself, 23rd of April. Uh, I'm doing it uh, on, on a Zoom thing. So um, it's on, on Eventbrite, but it's a two-hour session. I am charging for it uh, because actually I'll be giving you a page-by-page page, um, workbook. You can work your way through it. So you come out of, out of it with a really good, strong plan. So it's £45 plus fat. And um, that's all I've got to say this, this morning. So any questions? This was Dragon's Den. Lady doing uh, um, baking-free um, vegan food. And uh, this was uh, usually companies make nut bars and things like that for that marketplace. But she was doing a whole range of, uh, of food, um, which didn't require a baking process. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, some of the stuff has got a short shelf life. Um, but she wasn't going to go um, initially with a, with a company to prepare the food for her. And she just said... Um, oh, well, I'll wing it. And, of course, that really didn't go down with the dragons very well because they said, well, if you get an order from one of these supermarkets, you're going to need to scale up your business. If you are using an external um, uh, food-making uh, company for, uh, to put your food together, to your recipes, then they need to be paid on the, uh, on the 30, 30 days. What's your cash flow going to look like? during that period because um, you're going to um, have that 30 that bill to pay and you may not yet be paid by the supermarket so how are you going to, to finance it and of course the money that she was asking for which I believe was 50,000 pounds wasn't going to cover this and so the the dragons couldn't see um, how how to invest in that successfully because she had no cash flow plan to cover her increase in business so um, comment on that, uh, Hamish. Yeah, well, I think there's, there's two things there, uh, Mike. Obviously, I, I mentioned earlier that I actually do a cash flow forecast. You know, it's absolutely essential um, because then you can work out, okay, well, you know, wh what are the big bills that I have to pay? Um, and, you know, when are they, they going to fall due? And do I have the money to cover them? Uh, at the moment, you know, a lot of people will be doing that. And, and you know, it's a sea of red. Um, because they haven't got the income. So it's a question of, okay, well, what, what can I defer? What can I push back? And uh, it's always a question of going out to some of your suppliers and saying, well, can you, you, know, can you give me better terms? Um, that sort of thing. So be proactive about it. But also I think you have to understand, <clears throat> you know, that, that lady is, is, she's got what we would call a, a cash gap. So that, um, you know, she's getting, she's, uh, she's, effectively uh, uh, buying in stuff and selling it but not getting paid 
before uh, she has to actually uh, actually pay for the goods that she's bought and uh, that sort of thing. So it's about understanding that and and working out okay where 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 is my cash gap? How big is it? And how do I actually bridge that gap? Um, and that's that's uh, so. Um, I mean, it is most of us, what we do here, we're in service-based industries. So we're kind of, um, uh, we, we don't experience a cash gap. If you're a, something like a builder or something is buying in materials and then, you know, uh, 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 working on, on, a, on a site and then getting paid by his customer, then he, he'll have that cash gap between buying and then actually getting paid for the, his services. Okay, uh, Mike, if I can just come in there. Yes, Derek. Anybody going to the bank, the bank will require a cash flow projection. <laughs> They'll also want a business plan um, showing how you're going to survive through the this problem and then how you're going to call out of it. Um, cash flow and obviously a profit and loss. Now, you may ask why. Well, the answer is the bank will look at the profit and loss and then we'll say, well, what are your terms in terms of purchasing? What are your terms on sales? And how, you know, do these add across? So you've got to make sure they add across. The other thing you've got to do is in your, as well as the business plan, then you want a narrative for the bank. One of our clients, he runs events. So he has to pay deposits. Um, and he thought he'd be clever. We did the business plan. We did the cash flow. We did the profit and loss. And then the bank was coming back with loads of questions because he didn't want to use me to actually write an idiot's guide for the bank manager. So the result was the bank manager was coming back and saying, but hang on, you're telling me you're having events on this date, but you're paying out money on this date. Whereas if he'd actually gone to the bank manager in the first place and sort of giving him notes that we have to pay for the deposits on the event sites in advance um, so many months, that would have made more sense to the bank. So even if you're not going to the bank, I would suggest people sit down and write their own business plan, cash flow, and profit and loss account because that way you've got a higher chance of riding through this um, situation. And I noticed Hamish was nodding. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, okay. Derek. I agree, Derek. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, just to uh, an another thing, uh, just to oh, mi by the way, Michelle sends uh, from Caboodle Design sen sends her apologies this morning. She's got a big presentation, virtual presentation to do this afternoon, so uh, she's uh, she's working hard on that. But uh, um, another interesting uh, twist on what Hamish was saying was. She's got a, a stomping foot client and um, uh, she's going to need, when she gets uh, out of uh, the, the pressure she's under at the moment to do things, um, she's going to need to get some terms of engagement sorted out so that, you know, it, they phone up uh, or send her messages on a, on, a, on a Sunday and things like that So and expect things done instantly. So uh, she's going to need to to uh, rein that one in a bit. The other thing that uh, Hamish mentioned, which I think is is important, is the the selling gently is now something that's uh, um, changed quite a lot in the marketplace. The traditional, uh, well, all right, then how many do you want? Is uh, is probably long gone now. People want to be gently brought in and look at the the real benefits of what you're offering. And um, it's not about the widgets. It's about what, uh, what those widgets will actually do for the business. Um, I don't know whether you've got any further comments on that one, uh, Hamish. Yeah, I think, um, what, I think the stats show that these days uh, buyers do a lot of research online before they make a purchase. So they will check you out before they... Uh, actually make a purchase and probably even start talking to you so that that sort of buying cycle um, has uh, if you like it's concertinaed a bit because the buyer knows a lot more about you before you actually start engaging in, in the sales process um, 
So I think, you know, so that's why things like LinkedIn and, and Facebook become more important, depending which platform you're, you know, you're, is relevant to you. Uh, and having a, a really good LinkedIn profile is, is so important because uh, people will check you out, will actually uh, see, well, who are you? And if you've got a rubbish profile, um, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're doing the disservice to yourself. Uh, so I think that, that, that that's uh, and part of it. So they know a lot more about you before you actually sit down and start talking to your prospect. I think that you have to understand that uh, than it, it was a few years ago. Um, but absolutely, um, it is about understanding what your customer needs are and actually trying to see the world from where the customer is sitting. How does the world look like to them? And if you can do that, um, then you can actually start uh, to engage and uh, actually convert the, cu- the uh, prospect into a proper customer. Um, can I just make an observation? It's Ian Martin again. Is that okay, um, guys? Can you hear me? You're still a little bit choppy, but uh, speak reasonably quietly. Okay. Um, we had a, a catch up at the Growth Hub yesterday with uh, the LEP and um, uh, really got some feedback on just some of the numbers about Sybil's this um, COVID business in England. Um, there have been over um, 300,000 approaches to banks um, online, uh, tens of thousands have actually fully applied. Um, 4,200 clients across the UK have so far received loans. But the, just to put it into concept, into context, and to manage expectations, inevitably all the banks um, and, and uh, lenders through the British Business Bank scheme have been swamped with inquiries, applications, and and well, they all reconfigured their workforces to. Um, meet the demand and, and to help process it. Um, many, if not most of the banks were working all last weekend over Easter. Um, and, and there are apparently high agreement rates and high take up rates. But I think it's really important to manage some companies' expectations. And, and there are really three groups that I think that the banks are trying to, invest in, to identify. And the first one is um, those businesses that were loss making before the emergency. And I think people have to be very honest about where they are in this cycle um, because uh, the, the, all the words around um, receiving loans and receiving support is you know, this has to make sense and needed to make sense before, um, even before this crisis hit. The second area are viable businesses that. Um, uh, that, that were viable prior to the emergency, but with short-term and medium cash flow issues uh, that need resolution. Um, and the third is viable businesses prior to the emergency, but with sufficient reserves, which are, may allow them to continue in the short term, but require longer-term support. And I think companies, yeah, in, in the Growth Hub, we're all about trying to help people to manage realistic patients. Uh, and there are um, some companies applying for um, uh, loans uh, that really don't need them. Uh, and people have to be realistic because anyone who thinks that, that uh, lending institutions can't see what you've got in the bank these days is frankly um, uh, probably kidding themselves. Um, but there, there is a lot of positive stuff happening. The other thing, um, Derek uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, some really, really good suggestions. Um, but if you go on to the British Business Bank website, there is a fact sheet and a checklist a link there, which really lists all of the information that any lending institution, um, you know, need in conjunction with. Um, any application that's being made, and and that information is is a two page download which you can easily just print off on your print. Very good checklist, actually. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ian. It was a little difficult at times with Sorry. your connection, but we 
I think, got the gist of that. So uh, Jeff has got a, posed a question, hasn't he? So yeah. uh, at pivots. So. Yeah, so it's, it's something I'm seeing a lot and I'm having a lot of discussion with my um, clients around how they're going to pivot their business. Now, normally you have a bit more time when you see an emerging technology or you see something changing, but literally overnight businesses have gone from trading to getting locked down and actually they're trying to figure out how they pivot their business. Um, so anything that any, anybody in the group can share as to where they've seen great pivots, it might give others within the group a bit of an idea of, well, actually, do I need to think outside of the box in what I do? Mm. Um, so have you seen yeah. any pivots of interest? Well, actually, um, I was talking to Michelle uh, um, before Easter, actually. So she has a big uh, client who's in, in, uh, involved with the HGV training. Uh, so obviously, actual road testing and learning—that that's like it's not proceeding at the moment. What the, what they have done is it's quite a large um, theoretical part to the um, the training, and they've actually increased that. Um, so that's what they're focusing on at the moment. So uh, actually, they're building that up to be a, a more important part of their their offer. Uh, so I think it's that you know it, it's something that we're already doing, but I think it was as actually sort of like become the main main part of the business i think the other thing that i've uh, seen uh, also um <coughs> excuse me uh involved with, with a uh, high-end uh, sort of food restaurant and uh, obviously that's that's closed but what they have been doing is is actually doing um well essentially family-based meals now as a, as a takeout takeout service um so obviously they can't have people come into the restaurant, but what they do is, is offer that as a, as a takeaway. Um, and actually, well, I say it's a takeaway, it's actually something they deliver, in fact. Uh, so it's, um, so there's that. And I think um, I know there's a guy called, um, what's Steve Page. I don't know if you've come across him, but he's a guy based in Guildford who runs uh, an events type business. But he's, he's got all his catering contacts. Um, they're now supplying hospitals. Um, because, of course, all the hospital canteens have all closed. Uh, so they're actually supplying food to the hospitals, um, which I think is, is a fantastic uh, um, you know, uh, switch that he's doing. So, uh, so yeah. So, um, so there are there are things out there uh, um, which I think is, you know there's quite a lot of positive stuff going on amongst all the other you know difficulties. So uh, yeah. I don't know if anybody else has got some some uh, good stories to say on that. I've seen um, just on my side, it was interesting because um, there's a few plumbers and, and builders that were trying to do renovations to the house, and I've seen those that have pivoted and what they will do, and those that haven't, and the ones that have pivoted are what will who will get our business when we come out of this and and can do things. So. For example, we've got to get a whole boiler replaced and, and sort of new system. In, and literally, I've been sort of sticking my phone in various corners with FaceTime on and cameras and flashlights so they can get an idea of things to actually give me quotes. Now, three of the other companies I've contacted said, oh, no, we can't even give you quotes. We can't come out. No, it's not considered an emergency. So I've now narrowed it down to two for two people that actually are going to try and transact and potentially survive this climate. And it's how do you sort of adjust everything that you do from a service offering and, and put your eyes in the, the, or yourself in the eyes of the customer to think, well, what do they fundamentally need? What do I need to be comfortable with this? What caveats do I need to put in place on the backdrop of it? That actually means I'm in a position that I can support these clients and you know, have a decent pipeline built up. Yeah. I think I actually, you know, I think, you know, what better time is there to uh, um, build customer uh, confidence and loyalty than in a crisis yeah. you know and i think that that's the lesson we've all got to take is, is actually if we're um uh, you know open to uh, uh, ideas and uh, just doing things in a different way uh, we will all come out of this a lot better and a lot stronger mm -hmm.